I'm Colette Wong, and welcome to SG Tech's Global Future Series, where we bring you up to the minute reports on the strategies and innovations that are taking Singapore's technological sector into a more sustainable, trusted, skilled, and digitally transformed future. In this episode, we are focusing on the dramatic opportunities and challenges offered by AI. Well, I'm delighted to be joined today in the studio by SG Tech Executive Director Yen Chong. Yen, welcome. You know, these are really exciting times for the Singapore tech sector. With generative AI and machine learning attracting headlines globally, how is SG Tech responding to the challenge and the opportunities of AI? Because there are some very diverse opinions globally. Yes, there are, Colette. Thanks for having me. Well, firstly, in SG Tech, uh, a lot of our members are themselves the players behind the piece of tech that we're talking about. Uh, from an artificial intelligence AI perspective, it's not new. Uh, it's been around for, for decades. I mean, pretty much, you know, as, as you know, artificial intelligence is really the simulation of human intelligence uh, using machines or machine learning or, or models, right? So effectively, Gen AI is really just one type of artificial intelligence. You know, the wave has caught us very much in the last 12 months, uh, where in this tool itself you know, has uh, become something that the consumers and obviously business can get their hands on. Now, I understand that SG Tech has done some very interesting research into AI. Can you tell us what some of the main findings have been? We're trying to demystify uh, what this Gen AI is about. Uh, and certainly, the piece of work is really uh, focus on uh, us firstly, uh, we have the benefit of the knowledge of uh, 30 of our member companies, the tech companies, uh, both of bigger uh, global NMNCs as well as the tech companies in Singapore. So they have provided their insight of the kind of skill sets uh, and uh, in a way trying to categorize what uh, this means for firstly a general user or maybe to a power user or even someone just looking towards uh, you know, carving a career. Uh, in tech and for AI. So where do companies go for guidance? Well, firstly, I mean, companies can come to us, you know, in the sense that to understand uh, what are these different categories, what are the kind of skills, and how they can basically harvest, you know, the, the tool or, or this, this uh, AI or Gen AI to actually increase their productivity, and in some cases, obviously, to support them on their digitalization journey as well. Great stuff. Yen will be talking again soon. And we'll be hearing more on generative AI and its impact on Singapore business from SG Tech Chair Wong Wai Ming and co-chair of the Talent Steering Committee, Ben Ma, later in this episode. Generative AI and machine learning inhabit an ever-changing and dynamic space, predicted to be as important to a company's economic growth as they are to large government agencies. In the fast-changing world, Artificial intelligence is redefining how companies and customers connect. Generative AI with its ability to learn has arrived and is bringing challenges around the creation, distribution and control of data. Avpoint is on a mission to help organisations ready themselves for the new wave of technologies. Avpoint co-founder and CEO says responsible sharing of data and proper governance are crucial to helping organizations realize their ambitions with AI. One of the critical issues we help uh, large enterprises, um, government, financial services, manufacturing solve is the governance of data. It's the access uh, control, the access lifecycle. When should something uh, be accessible and when should that um, access be turned off? For many businesses, innovating and keeping up with changing technology, such as AI and machine learning, is essential to remain competitive. The definition in our industry, we're in the software industry, we say a year is eternity. So the only constant in our industry is change. The, if you're not improving and moving forward, by definition, because everyone else is, you're moving backwards. So it's very, very important to continue to leverage technology to modernize, to move faster as a business. Future-proofing is also top of mind for the NTUC Learning Hub, a leading education and training provider in Singapore. With that point, NTUC L Hub is using technology to help transform the employability of workers through lifelong learning. 
using immersive and interactive uh, learning experience such as a virtual reality and augmented reality application. This allows us to actually create a more immersive and also experimental learning experience as this technology can bring up certain extract concepts to life and make learning more engaging and fun. NTUC Learning Hub uses machine learning algorithms to identify trends, refine its product and deliver relevant training for individuals. Its LXP app has served many individuals and businesses in their reskilling and upskilling journeys. We could actually propel uh, the employees to the next level of a uh, new gen of a uh, skill set in a much more efficient way than before. And as an individual employee, they could actually see the benefit of AI helping them in their career uh, much more efficient than before. At Fairfield Methodist Primary School, FPoint introduced a chatbot called Fairbot to go beyond academic support. Fairbot helps look after the students' emotional health. And we actually use the same principle as we are designing the Fairbot, where the Fairbot is not just on academics, not just for students to ask questions. We actually take care of the social emotional part of the students um, as they are using the Fairbot. So they are doing both. They are learning online, but they are also developing their social emotional capacities while using the Fairbot. With that point, bringing the right technology to meet the school's educational vision is just the beginning. We also find that because they are so experienced in terms of teaching and learning platforms, they actually help us to have more ideas on how to use the chatbot and um, how to use the technology in the classroom. So uh, we have very robust discussions about how technology can help to bring about better student outcomes in the classroom. The power and potential of AI is now a reality for the public sector, commercial organisations and education institutions. With the right support, the potential of AI becomes reality. When the students are happy, healthy, it actually translates to better cognitive skills and better academic outcomes, so a very ha a happier school experience. In time to come, uh, we will see that you know, AI is always served as a supplementary tool to actually help individuals, whether to improve on a professional or at a personal basis as well. Uh, it's very, very important to be part of that equation to provide real value uh, for employees and employers alike as they transform and keep up uh, with the change in technology. SG Tech has been at the forefront in helping its members meet the opportunities and skills challenges of generative AI. Here are insights from some of our industry leaders. SG Tech realized that this is a very important moment where there is a need to partner with business owners, technologies and individuals towards capturing this Gen AI opportunity that is in front of us. So SG Tech has a critical role to play in this because they are kind of the intermediary between government and, and the tech sector here in Singapore, right? So there's a lot of things they need to be doing. They need to be helping to understand what industry needs and shaping policy and funding and, and support programs for that. But more importantly, they also need to be persuading tech companies and, and their membership base to adopt these policies. So SG Tech actually plays a very, very important connecting bridging role between authorities, between providers, to all different businesses, not just from the aspect of technology. It comes together to talk about even people. I think a lot of times the focus is on people. That's why we are talking about now with Gen AI. It's not about the technology itself. It's about people. How do we prepare them in terms of what kind of skills Uh, there, there are going to be new roles, new opportunities. So if you come in uh, with that sort of the digital first mindset, you come in with some of the knowledge of data, of ethical use of AI, uh, some of, of how to avoid some of the pitfalls, then uh, the job opportunities are going to be myriad. There are going to be many diverse jobs. And if you are able to provide the skills that are needed, then you have uh, advantage over everybody else. And we just need to educate, find, the right business partners, business owners, uh, community practitioners to come on us on this journey where each one of us, we plant the seed, 
right? And the new growth of opportunity will come. If you work for a technology company that is building AI models or AI applications, then the traditional skills, machine learning, and all the coding skills are still going to be critical. But for the vast majority of companies, they're going to be AI users rather than AI creators. Therefore, the skill set they need is a little bit different. It's about data management, it's about ethical use of AI, it's about you know, all the knowledge that you need to maximize the benefits while minimizing the risks. So with creativity, it allows more opportunity to actually look at areas or even aspects of different technology integration with the adoption of Gen AI in improving business operations, the avenue of increasing revenue, right? And even improving the security aspect or even governance. Because ultimately all these things is still dependent how effective the tools is. It's still dependent on human creativity. In our tech world, we can't wait for years. You know, that is just too long. And now we're doing it within months. And we hope to do it in weeks. Um, and that's really the game changer for us as a trade association, is to translate policies to programs, to funding into the industry with the businesses to demonstrate real outcomes. Translating AI into real-world action can be a steep learning curve, and the implementation of AI within a business will naturally drive organizational change. Chief DX is helping its clients not only manage this process, but also to train employees for the transition. AI, or artificial intelligence, is set to shape the way we live, work and do business. With applications and opportunities evolving at a rapid pace, it's no surprise that tech can be difficult for organisations to make sense of, let alone embrace. People do need help adopting the technology, not only into their daily lives, but into their businesses as well. It is a steep learning curve, especially when the companies have to change their business processes in order to accommodate uh, technology. There are a lot of challenges with AI, but what comes to mind as being the greatest daily challenge is being able to source good quality data sets for the training of our algorithms and solutions. Companies like ChiefDX are aiming to demystify AI, improve applications and personalise the process. At the moment, um, it's a buzzword. People aren't very sure of how to utilise the technology to get an ROI. And, I, that, and that way, I think there's a huge market for external consultants to come in and help them out. And industry-wide, it seems there's no time quite like the present. In the last few years, we have a great reset and uh, because of the pandemic, which made many companies realise that uh, if they do not embrace technology, it's very di difficult for them to uh, survive and uh, do business. Chief DX was uh, born in Singapore as a local AI startup. Uh, we've now established our global headquarters in Singapore. And since time of inception in 2017, we focus on three main industries, media and entertainment, healthcare, and GovTech. But the one thing that we've always kept in mind is that data is a competitive advantage. In media and entertainment, Advanced AI analytics can provide real-time feedback for content creators. It allows them to almost have the audience telling them where to go in terms of the content. Supporting healthcare with AI is all about patient-centric solutions. Right now, from what we can see, uh, there's a crunch in resources in the healthcare industry. So in order to be able to replace some of those with automation so that the people who are working in the industry can focus on patient care. We look at using AI to be able to deliver that in the solutions. In GovTech, the responsible use of data and cybersecurity are primary focuses. The Chief DX model is based on creating centers of excellence. We're able to enhance uh, our clients' internal AI capabilities um, by building them a center, an AI center of excellence um, firstly, we would conceptualize the structure of the team. Then we would acquire talents on their behalf. 
um, while overseeing its operations and taking responsibility for leading the team to project completions um, before handing it over at the right time to their client's leadership team. The results from just one Singapore SME taking AI consultancy to the world stage are inspiring. Chief DX has helped scale businesses to unicorn status and created a strong presence in their second largest market, Dubai. They are Singapore startup and uh, that they are doing very good business uh, outside of Singapore, spreading the good name of Singapore abroad. The team believes personalization is the best way to move the industry forward. We have to focus on hyper-personalization because it's shown that we're used to personalization in our everyday life as consumers. So we need to offer the same level of hyper-personalization in the corporate world. And so I would see that the business models and the AI models that we're developing will move towards focusing on professionals and specialists. From business support to analytics and lately generating impressively detailed imagery, the AI industry looks set for exponential growth. At Grad College of Engineering, one example, a multimodal large language model built by Chief DX for the education sector, where an AI assistant transforms text or voice input into a verbal avatar. When uh, generative AI came about, uh, the common man was able to touch and feel the AI, and that has caused, caused the whole world to go crazy. I think it's going to be everywhere, both in people's personal lives and their businesses. I think eventually each person will have their own super assistant. They'll be able to help them manage their daily lives, optimize their daily lives. It's early days, but we're very excited about being in that space. And I think there's a lot more uh, technology and a lot more models that we can look forward to in the future. Well, joining us now is SG Tech Chair Wang Waiming. Thank you so much for your time, Waiming. Tell us how difficult is the transition to generative AI and machine learning for small to medium businesses, and how can SG Tech help companies make that transition? Yes, we have many initiatives. So, just to name a few, first of the flagship is really uh, digital transformation for SME, which will adopt a 3S framework that's very unique. We take a very strategic approach. Uh, for business in the terms of their transformation strategy. Second is DGTAC, which is really targeting an industry and trade association level to transform uh, on an industry-wide level in terms of uh, you know, technology transformation. And third, we have recently teamed up with AI Singapore and Skills Future Singapore, and we have launched a generative AI for tech workforce guide. It's really a resource guide uh, that shows a whole spectrum of skills and support available for business owners and their employees. Would you say we currently have the skills base in Singapore to ensure the transition to generative AI is as smooth and trouble-free as it could be? Yes, we have, but not enough. Uh, first thing, AI is really a new technology. Second, AI is such a fast-changing technology. You really have to look into how you constantly reskill, upskill and cross-skill to be relevant. At the same time, while we have many programs in Singapore, uh, but active participation from businesses and from the workforce, employees themselves, is very important so that we can build the right capacity to maintain and accelerate at the rate of change we desire. Thank you very much, Wong Waiming. I look forward to speaking to you again. Thank you, Kalei. Digital transformation and AI play a growing role in the world of facilities management. The technology brings efficiencies in cleaning and in risk management while elevating the experience for employees or visitors. The approach by leading facilities manager, Simple, also delivers real-time end-to-end monitoring for owners and operators. We live in a changing and connected world. But as we move around, we expect to walk into a space that feels right, feels safe, and is somewhere we can achieve our outcomes. Facilities managers and future thinkers like Simple are facing this challenge head on. Today, when we enter our building, we want to feel connected with the place. We want an elevated experience as a visitor to know that it is clean, safe, and digitally equipped with new technologies. ISS Facility Services Singapore, a leading workplace experience and facilities management company, agrees with Simple's integrated approach to meet their challenges into the future. To capitalize on the growth opportunity, 
and support the industry transformation. ISS is accelerating the adoption of tech-enabled solutions to improve in productivity, safety, sustainability, as well as creating quality jobs. Digital transformation is a double-edged sword. Companies are looking to accelerate technology adoption as it increases accountability and efficiency. They need platforms that provide trustworthy, scalable solutions to reduce risks. We want to move into the fully optimized uh, part of the risk management framework where you have everything in place, systems, internal controls, uh, but also where you use a platform to scale um, everything you want to achieve within risk management. International facilities management company Bunzel says Simple stands out because of its easy to use technology and operational delivery, focusing on robotics and the workforce. I think what's impressed me the most from Simple is their end-to-end -end approach. They're pulling all of this data together. They're putting it on a single dashboard designed for that customer in this facility. Super impressive. I haven't seen it anywhere else. The Simple ecosystem is something that James Yatras, head of Australia and New Zealand operations, is proud of. It puts data from the facility, the human workforce and the robotic workforce together on the one device, delivering in the preferred language of the end user. Simple by name, simple by nature. So we keep things simple. The tasks appear, you click on the button, up comes the task, it tells you clearly what to do, what checklist items you need to do and what steps you need to follow. The simple ecosystem is driven by artificial intelligence, the internet of things and robotics. Data is continually collected. Robots operate alongside to support the human workforce. Embedded sensors spread across public areas and facilities continually provide information. Protection of that information is crucial. In the world where data is the new oil, data privacy and security is increasingly at the forefront of our focus. For us, this goes beyond attaining ISO 27001. As a Nasdaq listed company, we are mandated to possess good data policies and being compliant across multiple regions. The potential reduction in operational risk and the increase in productivity and efficiency excite the facilities management sector. In about five years, we will be able to preempt operations based on past and present collective events. Technology is simple, we will continue to evolve with AI to support the industry operations. Think of a building like a human body, where the inputs, the ICS knows, are like the CCTV cameras and IoT sensors, and the brain is the system that binds everything together so the hands and legs, like robots or the human workforce, could come together in a system where it decides who or what is able to do that task. And in doing so, a building is now able to take care of itself. And that wraps up episode one of the Global Future series. You can watch and share this and all six episodes by visiting the SG Tech website. Digitalization features in episode two. I'll see you again soon.